journalist arrested for apostasy in Saudi Arabia. Ali Abdul Lahoum, a Saudi-based Yemeni journalist, was arrested in August and charged with apostasy and insulting Islamic sanctities. On October 26th, a criminal court in uh, Najran sentenced him to 15 years in prison. Lahoum moved to Saudi Arabia from Yemen to work as the executive director of the Alwadi TV channel. Reporters Without Borders, or RSF, for, SF for short, reported that Lahoum was initially arrested for a labor complaint in which he allegedly owed work to an unnamed employer. Later, RSF obtained a copy of the document refuting the initial claims of his arrest. The paper mentioned the cause of his arrest was using social media to, quote, spread ideas of apostasy, atheism, and blasphemy. Uh, Sabrina Ben-Nui, RSF's, RSF's Middle East desk head, is calling for his immediate release. She mentioned that, quote, space for debate and exchanging information is still subject to draconian surveillance in Saudi Arabia. A 2020 Amnesty International report stated that despite all the rhetoric of reforms in Saudi Arabia, the Arab state is still systematically silencing dissent. Um, so this is a little bit of an older story, but I just learned about it recently. And so I wanted to feature it because I thought that this was um, important. And it goes to show that these supposed image of Saudi Arabia, like liberalizing is not what it seems. And I also wanted to note that I think it's so fishy that this man's Twitter account has now been fully suspended. So there's no way for people to actually go see or investigate what his tweets promoting atheism, apostasy, and blasphemy even were. Saudi has a suspicious relationship with Twitter. I'm just going to put it like that. Mm, um, okay, we don't know. We don't know. We don't know. Um, no, I mean, yeah, we do. <laughs> like... <laughs> we don't know what happened here. Okay. Um, where is he? What's the situation right now? As far as we know, he's still incarcerated. You know, like every single time that Saudi Arabia is like trying to be like, oh, we're good now. Look, we have Halloween. We have Halloween. We have theaters now. People could go watch movies. People should be like, Where, where's Lahum? Is that his name? Mm -hmm. Lahum? People should be like, where's Lahum? Okay. Every response to people like, Every time Saudi Arabia has tried to be like, come, please, we're running out of, we're running out of oil money. We're running out of oil money. Please come tourist here. We, we're not, we're not Wahhabi anymore. We're not Wahhabi. Look, Halloween, Halloween is shirk. We're shirking here. Look at this. How much more, how much more anti-Wahhabi do you want us to be when we have Halloween? Mohammed bin Salman is coming and I'm like, basically saying like 95% of the hadith is not legitimate anymore because it's not mutawatir, even if it's sahih. That's what MBS apparently says. It's like, what the hell? And you're like, people are like, oh my God, that's so extreme. We love it. It's reform. People are like, people are like, no, fuck off. No, seriously. Like you are, you are torturing people. You're arresting people for, for leaving Islam. For atheism, atheism is still a, a, a considered terrorism in your country. You're making your anybody that has questions your authority disappear, right? So, and you have, and you're also responsible. May I remind everybody for the greatest humanitarian crisis of our lifetime, which is like the bombing and starvation and um, using disease and lack of medication as a we weapon in Yemen against women and children, against civilians, okay? So the Saudi, the, um, Mohammed bin Salman is not an image of reform. In fact, he's a monster, worse than the people that came before him. I will go as far as saying, if you think Mohammed bin Salman is, big, is, is progressive because he's moving away from, you know, Wahhabism, I would say Mohammed bin Salman is worse than Wahhabism even if it's not based on Islam, okay? Mohammed bin Salman is such a monster that his politics and his ideology and his methods are worse than Wahhabism and Islam, okay? So him moving away from his, like being an Islamic fundamentalist is not progress, 
okay he himself what he represents and does even if it even if it becomes completely secular secular and without any religion at all okay even if still like well, oh saudi arabia is now a secular country religion is not even uh, quran is not our constitution and everything is now going to be completely done independent from religion you're horrible you're still you're still a monster you by yourself muhammad bin salman is a monster okay again None, none of this should. None of the reforms that they use as a way to whitewash all the crimes that they're doing should be. Nobody should buy that again. And also, yeah, people on Twitter, anywhere, every time Saudi Arabia were like, "Oh, look, look at our beautiful buildings. Oh, look, Vision Twenty Thirty. Oh, look, look at how futuristic our plans look." Yeah, people should be like, "Where's, where's the home, right?" Or you know, and every single other um, person that is now being tortured. And Free race Badawi. Right, but another, another yes, journalist exactly. and blogger. Yeah, 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 yeah. Anyways, this is all. And also, guys, if if Saudi Arabia ever does anything right, just remember that they're doing this because they're desperate. Because they they're have seen so the writing desperate. on they they've seen the writing on the wall. They know they can't rely on the United States, and they know they can't rely on oil forever. Okay, they are begging for investment. They're okay. They're on their knees, telling, asking you to come and watch their celebrate. And also, please shame every single celebrity that goes into Saudi Arabia and p performs a show there as a way to wash, whitewash their human rights record. Okay, they are part of the problem. Every athletes single celebrity, too. athletes and celebrity, every single one of them that goes there and does this. They have blood on their hand. They are part of the plan of distracting away from Mohammed bin Salman's crimes. They're actively taking part. Like, and they know that. They know they're doing that because they're every time somebody announces this, they have a mass of people in the, in the audience on Twitter telling them what they're doing. And they still go ahead with it. Um, so they knowingly are providing cover for human rights violations. So you have to It shame reminds them. You have me to call of them when... David Beckham became um, some sort of ambassador for Qatar, like was paid millions of dollars mm -hmm. to be some sort of like whitewashing ambassador for Qatar. Like what such so disgusting. It's so viscerally disgusting. Yeah. <sighs> yeah. What, what, which one? We should also use the uh, um, other approaches. Well, there was one celebrity that canceled. Once it was brought to his, his attention, her attention. I forgot which celebrity it was. Do you guys remember which celebrity it was? Was it Nicki that, Minaj or I think Beyonce I think, apologized for previously performing there? Yeah, but I think yeah, I think it was Nicki Minaj who canceled. So yeah, people should not just like shame the celebrities who uh, go there. They should also congratulate the celebrities that cancel because they are like they're saying no to a lot of money. Okay. Yeah, it was Nicki Minaj. Yeah, so they're like basically saying, oh, yeah, this is horrible. I'm not going to be part of it. And they're like, they're saying no to money. When people say no to money because of human rights, you should be like, thank you. You should be on Twitter telling them that's great. Yeah. You know what it is? It's the power of the gay community because Nicki Minaj knows how much the gay community keeps her bills paid. <laughs> okay. Oh, wait, so, <laughs> so they were going hardcore at her. <laughs> for the Saudi situation. <laughs> she was like, oh, sh Okay, so we should be actually thanking the LGBT community. You know, guys, what, a lot of people need to realize that the LGBT community has gone far beyond um, protecting the rights of the LGBT community. Like, they have been... Everybody has benefited from the activism of the LGBT community. So thank you. Oh, for that. Speaking of, I want to give a shout out. So we're talking about praising celebrities when they do the right thing. So for example, there's Lewis Hamilton. So Lewis Hamilton is a prominent F1 um, race car driver. And he recently was talking about his unwillingness and hesitancy to go do his sport in mm -hmm. Saudi Arabia. And he specifically cited their abuse of the homosexual community. And, um, so there's been a lot of this has been mm. this has caused a lot of attention um in the gulf world and um so shouts out to lewis hamilton and um it it'll be interesting to see how that progresses i can't remember if it's going to proceed forward or not there okay okay that's good to know how are you aware of everything hey guys if you're a fan of blasphemy and sexy cali you know 
like me, then you need to be sure to subscribe to our newsletter. Link in the description below. Because if you subscribe, we will send you a free copy of our Blasphemous Art ebook. And let me tell you, it is the tastiest blasphemy that you can find anywhere available today. And we are so generous with our blasphemy that we continue to send you more blasphemy every week. So make sure to subscribe. Link in the description below.